Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again and I've retaken this video four times. So anyway, what I want to go ahead and talk about today is a new game that's coming to Steam tomorrow slash Friday, maybe today, uh, for you called Element Tower Defense 2. Now Element Tower Defense 2 was originally a Warcraft 3 mod, uh, or custom game, however you'd like to call it, that I have over probably 700 hours in. Uh, it's a tower defense game that's built around an interest slash income mechanic with I think six or seven different elements. So I'm gonna go ahead real fast, jump in and show you guys some gameplay. Um, so this is also a multiplayer slash competitive game. If you choose for it to be, you can play any way you'd like. Um, and there is a single player set of challenges you can go through for some more care, like I guess goal oriented progression. So I'm just gonna go jump into a survival game real fast. So we have options here. We've got easy, uh, normal, hard, very hard and insane. Along with your elements, typically you play all random. Uh, the length basically is either starting at wave one, starting at wave 11, or starting at wave 26. Uh, chaos, I highly recommend turning on. What chaos is, is it randomizes the elements of the enemies. So we have elements are randomized on us. So every five rounds, it drafts us an element to pick from, or not draft, but it randomizes. And then chaos means that instead of it being like water, fire, light, dark, it'll be randomized. You can get dark, 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 which just adds a little bit of RNG, which gives you replayability in my opinion. Uh, extreme, I'm not turning on, and God, I don't know. I think that's just for single player. So there's the standard Warcraft 3 map uh, that you can see right here. Actually, wait, is that different? No, I mean, it exists. Never mind. Uh, then you've got the lava map, the tropical map, the wasteland map, autumn, desert, and winter, and random. So I'm just going to play on forest real fast. And normally I'd play on like very hard or insane. But just because I want to show you guys a little bit about this game, I'm going to play on easy so I can speed through. So. Uh, standard interface here at the top right you have interest mechanic when this bar reaches here you get this amount of gold this amount of gold right here is based off your total gold amount so if i were to build you'll notice that number goes down so the trick is you typically would build and then sell right before the interest tick you do not have to do this for most standard modes this is more like the try hard version of element td if you decide to go for that now, you'll notice that I'm going to be selling a lot. Uh, the reason why we sell a lot is, like I said, for the interest mechanic. If you are playing on all random mode, everything has a 100% sale rate. If you play on all pick, I believe it's 90%. Um, so then as an example, you sell right there, get your income tick, and then build again. Now, for people who are Warcraft 3 players, I would like to explain some differences here. So at the bottom here, you can tell you have all of your elements. Because we're playing on all random, we were drafted darkness as our first element. You can see what the tower stats do. It explains all of it right there, which is really nice. Your basic towers are arrow and uh, cannon, which are considered composite type. So they don't have an element type, they're just composite. Now in Warcraft 3, these can upgrade. I do not believe they upgrade in Element TD2. However, they're a little bit stronger, but they're also more expensive. You also cannot do the elemental upgrade, so like Darkness Cannon Tower. However, there is a new building menu. So before in Warcraft 3, you would have to build Darkness Tower and then upgrade Darkness Tower. And then after you upgrade, depending on your element combos, you could pick a new one. Now it's much better, simplified. Hit spacebar, everything pops up for you. So you can see all of your combinations with all of the descriptions along with the damage scaling. So you see how it says 80, 320, and 1280. That's respective to what it has. So say poison, I think is maybe, I could be wrong here, water dark. So Water Dark Tier 1 makes Poison Tower 1. Water Dark Tier 2, meaning you find a Water T2 and a Dark T2, you could get upgrade to a Poison Tower 2. You cannot upgrade to Poison Tower 2 until you find the elements. So then you have your Tier 3 elements, which are on the right side, separated here. And then you have Interest, which is its own separate thing. Um, interest, I don't know if you can random Interest yet. Interest used to take place of an element, so every five levels you could draft an Interest. Not sure if that's in the game right now. I think they said they have plans for it. I don't fully remember. Uh, also, this one little thing here is called an essence. Essences are used for uh, pure elemental towers and for your periodic table. So when you, if you get lucky, I guess depending on how you wanna play, if you end up getting one of every single element and you get, uh, I think one guaranteed pure essence or two by the last round, you can make one periodic table or two periodic tables. If you have three of one element, then you have access to making the ultimate of that pure. So say uh, right now I have darkness one, so I can build a darkness tower, right? I'll just sell this, make a darkness tower. 
I can't upgrade until Darkness 2. So if I had Darkness 2, I could spend 550 gold to upgrade. If I had Darkness 3, I could spend gold and the pure essence to make like a pure darkness tower. So, since you guys have the basics now, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of speed this up since we're playing in very easy. So, Fire and Dark makes Arcane Tower, which has unlimited range. Uh, darkness is really good against water, so that's fine. Let's go times 7 just to speed this up. Okay, good. Now, again, we're playing on a really easy mode. This You cannot do this in higher difficulties. I mean, I guess you could. It would be called the speed run, but for the most part, you're not going to be doing this. <laughs> Okay, Water 1 makes Vapor Tower. Corrosion Tower is also really good. It's, I don't know, it says it's it's mainly for damage amplification. I don't really think it's meant for main damage source. Vapor Tower, however, is really good. It hits in a line. So tower positioning, I put it here. If you look here now, you'll see it kind of like shoot. It's also cool because you can change the, the targeting of your tower. So I believe towers are set to kind of like smart AI, like... Like, this tower is set to target the last, I believe, target far, because it wants to hit, like, in a line, you know? So its its AI is smart against that. So that's kind of one thing cool. Uh, and, of course, you can choose it, you know, you can change whatever you want. Um, also, mobs here, if you look, they have modifiers. So this is currently undead. After three seconds of dying, this creep will come back to life at 50% of its health. Uh, there's a couple different modifiers that you'll see cycle through. Nature. Nature gives us impulse. Impulse are actually some of my favorite towers. They're super far range towers. Oof, they're really expensive too. Impulse tower, I believe, does damage based off of its range. So if you can make it hit at max range, it's doing incredible damage. That was Nature T2. So Nature T2 means we can make a Nature Tower and then an upgraded Nature Tower. Also, Well Tower is an attack speed tower, or attack speed buff tower. I'm gonna put it right here, so this way it can buff them. Uh, let me, okay, we're good. You can tell if a target is buffed because of this right here. You can see like the attack speed multiplier buff. We have Solar Tower, okay. Uh, I need to slow this down just a little bit here. Build some impulse. They'll help take care of this. So now, if you're playing on like a harder difficulty, a common thing you do when you're interesting is you sell all your towers and then rebuild for the bonus type. So as an example here, fire is next or darkness is next. So I would remove my water because water does 50% to dark. Right? So I would sell basically right there because of the interest tick, and I would keep it because this interest will go before this timer. So let me just show you an example of what you would do. So I would get rid of these, get the vapor towers ready to be rebuilt, and then rebuild, and then the next round would come, and then you would sell again, but you know, you get the drift. You can also upgrade here to a well T2, which is 30% attack speed. Actually, wait. Oh, this is light. Nice. Probably put a amplified damage tower here, I think, maybe. Well, it doesn't need to be that close. Maybe like here. Here. Here it can hit. Well, then the problem is it doesn't get amplified by the well towers. Or the water towers. What did we just get? Quake Tower is really nice. Let's see, this is in range here. So if I make the Quake Tower here, it'll actually get hit by the attack speed. Quake Tower is uh, every X amount of attacks, it goes boom boom. Nice. Muck Tower is a slow tower. Houtzer Tower is a nice long range tower. Haste Tower does very good single target, but requires time to ramp up. Should probably build Haste Tower here. Flamethrower is a nice addition because it will uh, it'll basically ignite targets and then the targets will go boom. So if you see now, I have more than one of every element. I have two water and two nature, so I have this upgraded well tower too. 
This means I can make the periodic table, but I can't build the periodic table until I get an essence. The periodic table will actually be nuts because we have a support tower tier 2, so a support tower buffing one of the strongest towers in the game, pretty cool. Incantation I believe is also damage amp. Looks like we're starting to almost leak a little. Let me build a Nova Tower, which is also a slow tower. Pretty much when you're at this point in the game, I believe you just want to make like one of every support tower. Like Roots Tower is sick over here. Okay, we just got an Earth that makes... What did that make T2? Let's take a look at Earth. Earth here. Geyser Tower. For each creep within 200 AoE, it deals extra damage. So, build two here. Hit the upgrade and upgrade. Good, good, good. Mushroom is actually really good too. Mushroom is uh, it's like a nature AoE splash tower. Oops, a daisy. Didn't mean to do that. Upgrade, upgrade. And I'll probably make a well tower too over here too. Where's well at? There we go. Right there. Upgrade. And then let's make another Nova tower here, which will slow pretty much everything there. Need to make, uh, probably gonna leak a little bit here. No, no, we're good. Okay, that's Earth T3. We have impulse towers to take him down. I'm gonna take, let's see, we have not gotten an essence yet, so I'll just build two Earths right here. Click, upgrade, 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 and upgrade. And then because of that, I'll make another well tower since they can only hit a max of four, I believe. Put the well towers here, upgrade and upgrade. Good, it's sitting on 23,000 gold. Okay, let's make a windstorm. That's a slow tower. Let's come down here and do a nice spam of impulse. Oh yeah, there we go, that's right, baby. And then, I'll come over here and make a well and a well. Upgrade this well, upgrade that well. Beautiful. And then, laser tower is the opposite of that tower, where basically laser does more damage. I think the closer units are. Make, let's see, we can also make periodic table now, because we gained an essence, so sell this guy. Periodic table is 12,000 gold, we just got enough build that bad boy right there just to make sure the well hits it i'm gonna do this now i'll show you a cool trick here i'm gonna sell all of these and i'll make this tower here called trickery which says it's a tower that temporarily clones a non-buff tower so uh buff tower buff tower and then i don't think i really want the geyser i'm pretty sure it will mainly try to hit the periodic table yeah so now we can clone the periodic table Granted, it only lasts for 10 seconds because it's a tier 1, but still, that's pretty cool in my opinion. Okay, let me make... Uh, what do we got here? Blacksmith Tower is a damage buff tower. We just leaked. You've cleared the game. Oh, we're on We're on the special round. Nice, that was fast. Okay, I'm not used to very easy. Let me just... Don't mind me, guys. I'm just, you know, being a casual gamer here. Perfect! So when you get here, this is called the this is called the cheese round. Um, it's basically uh, Ronald McDonald over here. It's just a Warcraft three meme that's kind of I don't know. It's just always went across, I guess. And that's pretty much Element Tower Defense. It's it's really fun. Um, like I said, there's a lot of replayability to it. I believe also you can so <clears throat> you can also get in. I don't know if this is correct, but in the Warcraft three version you can gain an essence randomly. Like, normally you can gain an element, you can gain an interest, or you could gain an essence, but I don't think you can get an essence until wave 40 or 45, I think. And then the competitive side is if you are playing with a friend, as an example, or multiple people, if you saw, like if I just jump in here really fast to show you, you'll see that there's all these different lanes for people to play in. Uh, the multiplayer aspect or the competitive scene comes in like this. Say you're playing on easy, right? Or you're playing on medium, I don't know, it doesn't matter, right? And you build all the way up here in the front. Once you kill your wave completely, the next wave starts for every single player. So it's pretty fun. Even if you're playing on an easy difficulty, you can get rushed like crazy. And if you get rushed like crazy, it can make the game a little bit more difficult. So there's always a fun learning curve to it, which is pretty cool. And you can definitely see the skill gap of people. The only negative thing I have to say about the game right now is there may be a lot of delay when connecting amongst other people, multiplayer, like depending, you know, if one dude's in fucking Africa and you're on the other side of the world, you may have like 0.7 of a second delay, which 
is bad if you're a tryhard, but it doesn't matter if you're not a tryhard. Because if you just think about it, you would have to wait a little bit longer on every interest stick. So I'd have to sell like now, and then I would go to rebuild, but there would be a delay. But there is something to kind of counter the delay. They have shift building from Warcraft 3 in the game. So shift building is basically you hold shift and you click and your guy will automatically build. So that completely counters delay because there's, you know, like there's no delay on the action. You just shift queue it up and then it's, it's like, it's queued up. Anyway, that's pretty much the game. Uh, I hope you guys will like it. I believe it comes out tomorrow. I'll be most likely streaming it for a couple of hours. And hopefully it'll be something I get to jump into and reoccur and, you know, play it every so often. Because I love this game, man. I played this game and pretty sure I played this game in elementary school and middle school and fucking high school and college. Like, I played it and now I'm playing it now and now I'm making a YouTube video on it in 2020. So I always get excited when, when Warcraft 3 kind of pops off. So anyway, I'm going to catch you guys later. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And everybody can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everybody.